recommended hospital disinfectant protocols don't fully eliminate C. difficile spores, leaving patients vulnerable to infection. Welcome to Microbial Minutes. This is ASM's update on what's hot in the microbial sciences, the non-disinfected C. diff edition. I'm Julie Wolf, Science Communication Specialist here at ASM, and today we'll be discussing a paper that was published in ASM's Applied and Environmental Microbiology Journal, which you can find at aem.asm.org. And of course, we're going to link this study and all the related content down below. This particular study had a take-home message pointing out that C. difficile spores survive biocide treatment. And this is an important study because C. difficile is a huge problem in the United States and around the world. In the United States, C. difficile causes diarrhea and uh, disease in nearly half a million uh, people every year. And about 15,000 people succumb to that infection. Uh, and this is a very dangerous organism, in part because it is, number one, fairly easily transmitted from person to person, and number two, it forms this very hardy structure called a spore, which you can see on the right-hand side there. Those circles are really uh, the that um, spore formation, which is first formed inside the mother cell, so sometimes you can see it in that longer cell, and then those are released uh, and can survive all types of different treatment, biocide, as we'll discuss, but also antibiotics. So this makes them very hard to uh, treat inside of patients. If there are spores that survive that antibiotic treatment, then the disease can come back quite readily. This is an especially dangerous disease for populations who are over 65, uh, people who are staying in hospitals and might have some underlying condition that would make them susceptible, immunize, immunocompromised people, uh, and as I mentioned, people who have already had one bout of C. difficile infection. Uh, and side note here, it's called Clostridium difficile in the title, but uh, we know that the genus has been officially changed to Clostridioides, so this paper was likely submitted before that official change had been made. The researchers here wanted to ask an important question about C. difficile, particularly uh, within a hospital setting because there is a large vulnerable patient population there, asking how effective are current hospital uh, disinfection protocols at getting rid of these C. difficile spores. On the next slide, we'll see that their uh, setup was fairly straightforward. They spiked uh, 10 to the 6 spores per mil onto various types of um, surfaces that you find in a hospital, things like stainless steel, floor vinyl, and the surgical isolation gowns. And then they cleaned these different surfaces with 1,000 parts per million of sodium dichloroisocyanate, uh, or sodium DCC, which they incubated with the spores for 10 minutes, uh, which is the recommended protocol. And then they looked at how many spores remained viable and were able to form those vegetative cells that can then form things such as col colony forming units and allow people to enumerate the living cells. On the right hand side, we can see their results. They're looking at both purified and unpurified spore populations in case there's something in that uh, extra spore milieu that may help them to survive. Uh, and you can see in when incubated in water alone, of course, all the spores are going to survive. Uh, and when added with the, uh, when incubated with that NADCC, the sodium DCC, all the spores die, uh, which is probably where those protocol recommendations first originated. However, when the spores were put on top of one of those um, hospital surfaces and then incubated with that sodium DCC, you can see that not all of the spores were fully um, eliminated uh, or killed. There, uh, there were a couple of different strains which they tested um, these different spores, both purified and unpurified from, in order to see that this was consistent. But you can see in all of the uh, gowns that were treated or not treated and the different um, surfaces that there were some remaining spores which could potentially infect and cause disease inside of a patient. From this, they were able to conclude that the spore transmission is influenced by hydrophobicity uh, and structure of the clinical surface, and that adhesion to that surface is likely uh, influenced by the outer spore structure, given that some of these different strains uh, form slightly different spore coats, uh, and that may affect how they interact with those different surfaces. Now, this is a very important um, piece of information, showing that some of our current hospital protocols are not uh, as effective as we would like them to be. And this was picked up in a number of different news outlets, as we'll see on the next slide. It was, of course, picked up by outlets that are interested in things like hospital control and uh, transmission of infections, but it was also picked up by a number of mainstream news sources, such as NBC News, who um, highlighted the senior author, Loveline Tina Joshi, 
Uh, and Joshi pointed out that there's a real infection control hazard with the doctor's coats and healthcare workers scrubs that people um, wear around the hospital, which may be a potential source of contamination, as they showed in this study. Uh, further, Joshi gave a statement to U.S. News and World Report, um, highlighting that this, world, this work can be applied to hospitals anywhere around the world, since a lot of these hospital infection control practices are standardized in many different locations. Uh, so today, we've heard that um, C. difficile spores are resistant to biocide treatment in a typical hospital disinfection protocol, uh, and hopefully this will lead to new disinfection protocols that will eliminate this potential hazard. Uh, I'd like to thank you for listening. If you want further updates, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, I'd like to thank Ray Ortega for production. I'm Julie Wolf, and I'll be with you next time on Microbial Minutes.